Hey guys, Kevin in the Murder Free Guys. This is what we're doing. This is a movie that I've been wanting to see for a very long time now. Uh, I didn't know if I was really going to be able to see it though. It's one of those films where I needed to see it before the year ended and thankfully it's come onto VOD recently which gave me the opportunity to see it and that is none other than Yorgos Lanthimos' next film, The Killing of a Sacred Deer. And what The Killing of a Sacred Deer is essentially about is we center on our main character, Stephen. He is played by Colin Farrell, and he is this very brilliant uh, cardiologist. He, you know, is a surgeon and everything. And uh, without really getting too much into the story, because there actually is a lot of spoilers in this film, he is basically taking this kid under his wing. He's trying to help him cope with a certain loss. And let's just say, there might be some feelings of hate and vengeance towards, um, you know, this towards this character, Martin, and uh, Martin might be a little bit more, uh, you know, Martin, Martin might need Steven to do something for him, and that's really all I'm going to say. So The Killing of a Sacred Deer in general, I was obviously hyped for this movie. Uh, first off, right off the bat, Yorgos Lanthimos just doing another movie uh, really intrigued me. You guys know how much I love The Lobster. That movie is one of the most creative and different films I have seen all decade. I've just, I've truly never seen anything styled like it. And the second that I finished, I'm like, I really want to see what else this guy does. So the second I heard this was coming out, I was automatically on board. But then the trailers intrigued me even more. They were so, they were just so mysterious and they were trying to keep things so hidden. And you guys know how much I love vague trailers. And that intrigue really stuck with me, uh, you know, ever since I saw that trailer. It's one of those trailers that has absolutely stuck with me even though most of the trailer just consisted of a character singing a song and a few little scenes here and there uh that really is all that trailer was ever since then i've been very intrigued and after watching killing of a sacred deer did disappoint fuck no the killing of a sacred deer is another fantastic movie from loris lanthimos i don't think it's quite a masterpiece i don't think it's the you know masterpiece that the lobster was but it is a near masterpiece for sure it demonstrates why he is such a great uh director and channels completely new territory for him we're gonna get into all that right now starting off with the cast and that was something that drew me into this film right away. Uh, this film is comprised of a very talented caster with some great actors thrown in there. And I think really everyone did a fantastic job. There really isn't an actor here that I can't think is at the top of their game because really everyone is. Uh, Colin Farrell in this movie, let's talk about him because, of course, he was in Yorgos Lanthimos' last film, The Lobster. And I don't know if this is on the level of that, but he still is tremendous in this movie. What I really love about Steven as a character is that she Sure, he is a guy who can feel an incredible amount of empathy for once he's forced to perform this specific task uh, for Martin, which I, I don't really want to get into what it actually is that he has to do, because going into the movie, I didn't know really what it was going to be, um, but not only do you feel bad for him in that way, but he's not necessarily the greatest guy. This is a guy who has a severe alcohol addiction, and uh, this might have compromised some of his work, especially involving Martin's uh, Martin's father's uh, killing. You know, his father has died recently, and uh, I, again, I don't want to get too much into it, but he really does a great job here. His character is someone who doesn't really take the blame for his actions a lot, and you know, you don't really sympathize him that way, but you do kind of feel bad for him once he's forced to go under uh, Martin's wing. But at the same time, you kind of can see where Martin is coming from, and it's just, Farrell does such a great job in this role. I really love what he did here. You can see throughout the film, he gets more and more manic because he starts to be, you know, can more and more under Martin's control as the film goes on, and I thought he absolutely killed it here. Colin Farrell, this just demonstrates why he's one of the best actors in Hollywood, I think, working today, and uh, this film definitely did not disappoint at all. And then Nicole Kidman as well in this movie. This has been an extraordinary year for her between Big Little Lies and other stuff she's done. And while I don't think this is on that level, she still has a pretty great role here as uh, the character of Anna. She is, in fact, uh, Steven's wife, and she's not necessarily the most trusting of him. There's a lot of things that he says that she doesn't fully believe. I really do like her character throughout the film. These two don't have the greatest marriage. You know, we start off the film, we think that they have a great marriage, and we see it's kind of manufactured, and it's not as great as it may seem, and I thought she did a really great job here. The chemistry between these two 
it's interesting because it does feel very dissonant. It feels like there's something missing, and it's supposed to feel that way, and they both did a really great job here. I really do love Nicole Kidman's performance throughout this film. However, for me, easily the standout of this entire film is Barry Keegan as the main character of Martin. Now, Martin, he's, again, without getting into it too much, because I truly didn't know where this movie was going, uh, Martin, he's technically the villain of this film, but at the same time, you feel a great amount of empathy for him. What Martin is going through is completely understandable. The reason why he's taking these drastic measures and he's starting to get sort of like his revenge on the family, it actually makes a lot of sense. And you can draw a lot of parallels towards Martin's character, and, uh, he does a really great job. A lot of the scenes, you know, you're waiting for him to have that one big freakout, and it never happens. He's very calm, he's very collected in that way but he also might be a little bit slower than others he clearly has some sort of learning disability and i thought he did a really great job here i've been a fan of him since i saw him in dunkirk but this movie truly shows the future that barry keegan does have i really love what he did here i truly think that he is in fact oscar worthy i think he absolutely killed it in this film he's not going to get nominated unfortunately but his scenes the scenes between him and colin farrell especially are very strong but he's one of those actors that was so great i thought he had great chemistry with nearly every one and he really did an incredible job here and then the rest of the cast are also as fantastic Rafi Cassidy uh plays uh Steven's daughter and she's great I've been a fan of her since Tomorrowland and she I thought was really strong here uh again without spoiling her character too much she does a really great job Sonny uh Sujlik plays uh Bob he is someone who you know he's their son and everything I thought he did a good job here Alicia Silverstone Bill Camp really like I said there's not a single dud in the entire film I think everyone did an incredible job and that's something I will absolutely give this film so now let's get to the directing and the writing, because that is something that immediately sticks out about this film compared to, say, something like The Lobster, because the big difference with this movie compared to The Lobster is the tone. The tone of The Lobster, yes, it was dark, yes, it was definitely... Uh, a very strange movie, but for the most part, it was very witty, it was very, um, you know, it didn't take itself too seriously, like, it was very dark humor, but there was this constant sense of hope throughout this film. This movie is the complete opposite. This movie, there's a constant sense of dread, and it is probably one of the creepiest films you will ever watch this year, and like I said, that sense of dread and just... Uh, fear, it's perfectly exhibited throughout this entire film, and uh, I thought it was just very well handled in that way. There are even some scenes that have humor, and they're very unsettling in that way, and I, I really did love the way the tone was done here. It was so well realized. You could tell that Lord Yorgos Lanthimos, he clearly wanted to show that he's not just good for this one genre. He is a great director, and this movie absolutely shows that he did a tremendous job here. Let's talk about the screenplay, because the screenplay in this movie is one of the most unique I've seen all year easily. Um... Because a lot of the scenes in this movie, the characters, they seem very robotic. They seem very, um, almost like droids. Like, they don't seem like people. They don't, you know, the, uh, words they'll say, you know, it should sound happy, but it's not delivered in that way. And it's very interesting the way that the film plays this. And to me, I kind of saw this as the family's just very fake. And the family's just hiding a lot of their inner demons in that way. And it's almost like they are, in fact, manufactured. They've become so, um, you know, they, they just become so lifeless that it's almost as if they're robots, and I thought it was just a really cool choice the way the screenplay was played there. I thought it was definitely very well done, uh, but like I said, the main story here, there's just this constant sense of suspense, you know, once Steven and Martin meet, something is just very off about their relationship. You don't know what it is, but you're incredibly intrigued to find out what the hell's going on here. Why is he acting this way? Why is Steven, you know, so um dismissive towards martin what's really going on here what could have martin you know what could have steven done that put this you know wrench into their relation what's really going on with this whole you know um sort of relation here and it's just like i said it's very well handled i love the way it's done eventually once you find out what what martin um wants steven to do 
while you feel bad for the family, you can absolutely tell where Martin is coming from to the point where there were points where I was genuinely rooting for his character. And again, I attribute it to just how great Lanthimos uh, fleshed out these characters. I mean, all these characters are so well realized. There's really not one that I wasn't connecting to, and I thought it was honestly very well done in a way. I was definitely very impressed uh, with the writing overall, whether it was showing how distant uh, Colin Farrell and Nicole Kidman are, how their relationship is, which like I said, their relationship is definitely not a happy one. They might seem happy, but it's not happy at all. Or where... Um their daughter's relation goes, because their, their, their daughter, without spoiling anything, she starts to become very infatuated with Martin, and their storyline, I thought, was very interesting. It almost kind of felt like, you know, she was uh, forced to be with Martin. It's almost like a Romeo and Juliet situation, where she wants to put everything on hold for Martin, even if the family doesn't really want her to be with him, and the story that that goes, I thought, was just very well done, and like I said, the film gets more and more suspenseful as it goes on, to the point where it just becomes absolutely manic and at points it's very uncomfortable to watch but I think Lanthimos he wants you to feel uncomfortable he wants you to feel uh just very disgusting during this film you know he wants you to feel disgusted he wants you to feel uh that dread you know but he doesn't necessarily want you to I think you know put it towards Martin's way like sure what Martin is doing is very wrong but at the same time the family they're not necessarily good people and I thought it was honestly a very good choice in that way so everything about the screenplay was just so well realized here the cinematography as well is some of the best i've seen all year uh this film it really goes all out with making itself stand out and what i mean by that is there is no cross cutting in this film there is no typical sort of camera angles where we'll just cut in between actors you know when two actors are talking we cut in between their faces no we'll cut from we'll, we'll do it we'll show it to like the side of an actor we'll show it from like the floor of an actor and it just gave you this really like i said eerie feeling that i think the whole film really does have it was very weird in that way but it actually worked very well and i thought the cinematography was great here uh there's a lot of symbolism for sure there definitely is a lot of symbolism in the movie a lot of things I, I honestly don't understand, to be honest with you. Um, but the symbolism, I thought, was also very well realized. It's clear that Yorgos Lanthimos, you know, he's still trying to make a very artsy-type film, and I think he really succeeded in that way. So the cinematography here, I thought, was great. Uh, the score in this film. Now, here's where we get to one of my only negatives with the film, which it is, with a film this good, it's hard to find a negative. Um... But the score here, if I did have to have one complaint, is as much as I do love the score, which it's fantastic, it's very Kubrick-esque, remind me of something right out of The Shining. In fact, there are points in this movie that does kind of feel like a modern-day The Shining. I'm not joking, it really does. Even though it goes in a slightly different direction than The Shining, it feels very much like something Kubrick would have made uh, if he would have lived, you know, to this day. Definitely, it feels that way. Um... My only thing with the score is it's constantly played throughout the movie, and what I mean by that is every scene, you know, you can hear the score, sometimes it's really overpowering the actors, and I'm not gonna lie, some points it did get a bit annoying. I, again, I'm not saying the score is bad, I think it's a fantastic score, one of the most chilling I've heard all year, but there were some scenes where I'm like, okay, you don't need the score to get me to feel that suspenseful, eerie feeling. I can just watch the scene play out, and I can tell, ooh, there's something off about this relationship. It just felt the film was doing that as a way to tell you what to feel. Like, oh, now you're supposed to feel, you know, um, unsettled. Now you're supposed to feel suspense. And it just didn't really work in that way. I think, um, you know, like I said, it's not, it's not a bad idea. I just think the score, especially in the first half, half of the movie. Uh, there wasn't a single scene that went by where they didn't play that score, and there were some scenes where I wish they would have just toned it down a bit. Luckily, eventually, they do, um, but I really wish we didn't get as much of an over-reliance on the score as we did here. And if I did have, to have one other complaint in the movie, is that because of how well fleshed out all the characters are, the one character I didn't feel is connected to, Bob, uh, their son, he just doesn't get the amount of development that I think the other characters have. He just, he feels a bit underdeveloped to me. They do some really good stuff with him, he just felt a little bit more underdeveloped. And, when we actually get to the ending of the film, the direction it ended up going, it did feel predictable. Like, I could have told you, okay, that's the person that's gonna die. It felt kind of predictable in that way. It didn't necessarily take me out of the film, like, it didn't hinder my enjoyment of the movie. 
movie in any way. I just feel that they could have made it a little less predictable, and, uh, you know, that's just not the case here. Uh, the editing here is fantastic. This movie absolutely flew by for me. There's really not a single scene that f I was bored. Honestly, I was into pretty much every scene that went on here. Even some of the smaller scenes, like when Steven goes to Martin's house, because Martin goes to his house, and then um, Martin wants to repay him the favor. Uh, that scene is incredibly well done. There are just so many things I love about this movie. I'd really love to get into spoilers, guys, but I don't really want to spoil this movie for you. I went into this movie knowing relatively nothing so, to get into the plot, you can imagine how surprised I was with what actually does go down. Uh, but The Killing of a Sacred Deer is easily one of the most suspenseful, chilling films I've seen all year, but it's also one of the most impressive. It shows why Yorgos Lanthimos is one of the best directors, I think, working today. I don't know if this has any Oscar potential. I think just because of how many Oscar movies there are, this one, unfortunately, is probably going to get snubbed very badly, but it is a film that I absolutely recommend you guys check out uh, towards the end of the year. It will for sure be on my uh, top 15, top 10. I'm still not entirely sure how I'm doing my best list yet, but it will definitely be somewhere on there. I can assure you of that The Killing of a Sacred Deer is a fantastic movie and I'm absolutely going to give the killing of a sacred deer overall in a so over guys remember the killing of a sacred deer let me know what you guys saw this movie overall left your thoughts and then please if you haven't seen this movie immediately it is definitely a must watch uh towards the end of the year and not enough people are talking about it. similar to lobster not enough people are talking about this movie and you definitely need to see it as soon as possible but that's my review hope you enjoy see you guys in my next video and we'll see you guys for that okay bye